Ivan Pavlov's theory laid a foundational concept in the field of psychology, shedding light on how organisms learn and adapt to their environment. Classical conditioning is a way that we learn about the things in the world around us. It happens when we start to connect two things that happen together. For example, if every time you hear a bell, you get a treat, you will start to associate the sound of the bell with getting a treat. Over time, you may start to get excited whenever you hear the bell because you know a treat is coming. This is classical conditioning, learning to connect two things together so that one thing makes you think of the other. Hi guys, welcome to this channel. Let's delve into the key concepts of Pavlov's theory of classical conditioning. Classical conditioning is a form of associative learning where a neutral stimulus becomes associated with a meaningful stimulus and eventually elicits a similar response. Pavlov stumbled upon classical conditioning while studying digestion in dogs. Initially investigating salivatory responses to food, he noticed that the dogs began to salivate not just to the presence of food but also to the stimuli associated with it, such as the sound of a bell. The process involves an unconditioned stimulus or UCS that naturally triggers an unconditioned response or UCR. Through repeated pairings with neutral stimulus known as conditioned stimulus or CS, the conditioned stimulus becomes associated with the unconditioned stimulus, eventually leading to the same response now termed the conditioned response or CR. The unconditioned stimulus is a stimulus that naturally triggers a response without prior conditioning. The unconditioned response is the unlearned response to the unconditioned stimulus. The conditioned stimulus is initially neutral but becomes associated with the unconditioned stimulus through repeated pairings. The conditioned response is the learned response to the conditioned stimulus. Classical examples include a dog associating the sound of a bell with food, a child associating the sight of a doctor's coat with fear, or a person associating the smell of coffee with wakefulness. One famous example of classical conditioning is the experiment done by Ivan Pavlov with dogs. He rang a bell every time he gave the dogs food, so eventually the dogs started salivating just at the sound of the bell even when there was no food present. Let's look at a few key principles of classical conditioning. Number 1. Extinction Extinction occurs when the conditioned response weakens and eventually disappears when the conditioned stimulus is presented without the unconditioned stimulus. If the bell, which is a conditioned stimulus, no longer predicts food, which is the unconditioned stimulus, the dog may stop salivating in response to the bell. Number 2. Spontaneous recovery Spontaneous recovery is the reappearance of a previously extinguished conditioned response after a delay. It suggests that while extinction weakens the association, it doesn't erase it entirely. Determinants of classical conditioning How quickly and strongly acquisition of a response occurs in classical conditioning depends on several factors. We will now describe some of the major factors that influence the learning of a conditioned response. Number 1. Time relations between stimuli the classical conditioning procedures are basically of four types based on time relations between the onset of a conditioned stimulus and the unconditioned stimulus. The first three are called forward conditioning procedures and the fourth one is called backward conditioning procedure. The basic experimental arrangements of these procedures are as follows. When the conditioned stimulus and unconditioned stimulus are presented together, it is called simultaneous conditioning. In delayed conditioning, the onset of the conditioned stimulus precedes the onset of the unconditioned stimulus. The conditioned stimulus ends before the end of the unconditioned stimulus. In trace conditioning, the onset and end of the conditioned stimulus precedes the onset of the unconditioned stimulus with some time gap between the two. And in backward conditioning, the unconditioned stimulus precedes the onset of the conditioned stimulus. 
it is now well established that the delay conditioning procedure is most effective in acquiring a conditioned response. Simultaneous and trace conditioning procedures do lead to the acquisition of a conditioned response, but they require greater number of acquisition trials in comparison to delayed conditioning procedure. The acquisition of response under backward conditioning procedure is very rare. Number two, type of unconditioned stimuli. The unconditioned stimuli used in studies of classical conditioning are basically of two types, appetitive and aversive. Appetitive unconditioned stimulus automatically elicits approach responses such as eating, drinking, or caressing. These responses give satisfaction and pleasure. On the other hand, aversive unconditioned stimulus such as noise, bitter taste, electric shock, or painful injections are painful, harmful, and elicit avoidance and escape responses. It has been found that appetitive classical conditioning is slower and requires a greater number of acquisition trials, but aversive classical conditioning is established in one, two or three trials depending on the intensity of the aversive unconditioned stimulus. Number three, intensity of conditioned stimulus. This influences the cause of both appetitive and aversive classical conditioning. More intense condition stimuli are more effective in accelerating the acquisition of a conditioned response. This means that the more intense the condition stimulus, the fewer are the number of acquisition trials needed for conditioning. Critics argue that classical conditioning oversimplifies the complexities of human behavior and emotions. It may not fully explain all aspects of learning and can be limited in its applicability to more complex behaviors. In conclusion, Pavlov's classical conditioning has profoundly influenced our understanding of learning and behavior. By exploring the mechanisms of association, we gain valuable insights into how organisms adapt to their surroundings, shaping the foundation of behavioral psychology. So that's it for this video. If you're looking for quality mental health resources, please visit my Etsy shop. The link is provided in the description box below. If you like the content of this video, please like it and subscribe to this channel. Thanks for watching.